Let's take about 10 minutes and talk about anti-lock strategies. Now, a lot of you are lock sport community members and you're interested in just picking locks. And, and I understand that. I, I like it myself. But there's also a lot of law enforcement uh, officers out there, a lot of federal agents. There's locksmiths working for those kind of agencies. There's, there are repossessors. There are penetration testers, security experts that are doing vulnerability assessments of facilities. They're going to run across locks like these. And in those cases, they don't have time to take a lot of time. To, uh, they, don't have, they can't take a lot of time getting through these. They have to get through them quickly, and they have to get through them reliably. Now, what motivated me is yesterday I saw uh, one of our agents trying to pick through a lock, this lock. And he was using a, a normal hook, and he spent 30 minutes without success doing the same thing. And that's because he had no plan of attack. He had one plan of attack, and that was the hook. But he had stopped there. He had stopped engaging his brain. And we need to continually look at the entire security system to find a weakness. Now, when I'm talking about weakness, let, let's, let me set our victim aside here for a moment. When I look at a security system like this, this is somebody that takes their security pretty seriously. We have a multi-lock MT5+. Plus. we got a badass chain. When I find this, i got to have a good plan of attack. And unless my name is Kokomo Lock, I'm not going to be able to pick through this and get access to the facility. So that would be an example of one plan of attack. The other extreme would be something like this, and I see this all the time. It's, it's an okay lock, but uh, this chain was never intended to be a security chain. And they do it because the hasp isn't long enough and they'll just simply use it. This is the other end of the spectrum. This is what I'm talking about by weaknesses. Another common weakness. I might find a really good lock. A medium badass chain and not so good galvanized chain. And if we keep looking at this, I call this a daisy chain. And that's because there might be a reason that three people that don't want to share keys or combinations need access to this facility. So each person or each organization will have their own lock. We have really good security and we have pretty bad security. Look on YouTube on uh, Master 175 and there's a hundred guys to show you how to shim this lock in about 10 seconds. I don't even know why they sell this lock. I can't understand why people buy them. Same with these. Four pin or no security, we can take a tool like this and get through. So when we're looking at our plan of attack, we might attack the weak points first. That weak point, it may not be the lock. It may be a, a, um, uh, there may be hinges on the door. We can pop the pins out. It may be a hollow core wood door. We can attack the door. There may be other entries like windows, but forget about that. We're talking about locks. We need to have a plan. Unlike that agent yesterday, we need to have a plan on exactly what we're going to do before we find it. And here, what might our plan be? And I'm going to go over this very quickly. When I encounter a lock that I know nothing about, I don't know anything about the key or the internal mechanism, my first attack will be to rake it. And I'm discovering stuff about this lock as I go. Now bear in mind, I've looked at this lock. I already know it has some weaknesses. But I'm just do demonstrating what the different sequence of events might be. When I'm raking it, I'm going to, well, we got open and I have to tell you that's unusual. If we're lucky, that happens. But it may not be, we may not be lucky. It may bypass, uh, it may stay secured and I quite honestly I expected that and I'm sure that agent did yesterday because this is the key. We have very radical bidding on this thing. High, low, high, low, high, low. I mean, there's six pins. This is not an easy thing to rake. The stars truly aligned for me and I got lucky. But that may not happen. What happens? What do I do next? Well, I give it about a minute. And if I can't rake it, and if I can't get a false set, that tells me no security pins, and I probably have a radical pinning. I'm going to throw down that, that rake, and I'm going to pick up my SPP, or my, um, my hook. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to rock it, to try to rock it into place. Now, with a radical bidding, it's not going to happen. And I can't get a false set, again, confirming no security pins. And now we need to go into slow motion. Now I need to apply the tension and do the traditional pin by pin. And I'm counting the pins while I'm doing this because that's information more that I'm gathering. And I'm trying to pin by pin pick this thing. I'll usually give this a minute, two at the most. But unlike that guy yesterday, I am not and I will never give a lock 30 minutes unless I'm just doing it as, you know, as part of the hobby. Okay, it's not going to work. What do we do next? Well, I have to try what I call bitch picking. You guys have seen this before. 
if I am bitch picking, I'm doing it because I know there's radical pinning in there. I'm going to put moderate tension and I'm just going to start randomly jabbing. And I'm hoping, and again, this is pure luck, just like the raking, except unlike the rake, this uh, pick, this hook will allow me to reach a little higher into the keyway and maybe, I'll give it one minute, maybe I can by pure luck hit the combination. And we did. We got lucky again. But let's assume we didn't. Let's say bitch picking doesn't work. What's the next step? Well, a lot of you may frown on this, but bump keys. Really reliable way to get in. Very, it, it may not always work. I even have a ring of, of um, uh, dimples. Low chance of success. I admit it. But it is a small chance and it gives me an option. And I put those, ring, those on my ring in uh, alphabetical order. So if I know the type of key way, I can look it up very quickly. If I know the type of key beforehand, I'll put the key in my pocket so that I have a faster option. Again, in the interest of speed, you notice I'm not, I have these rubber donuts and I'm not going to do the pull it out one click, hit it in, pull it out one. I want a machine gun attack this thing. I want to do it quick. So I put the rubber donuts to allow me to do that. I learned that in a, in a UK uh, rapid entry course. And truly, this, oops, I had it and I just gave it up. And you can do a machine gun attack on this thing, and it may or may not work. If you can't bump key it in one minute with 50 or 100 wax, however many is in my machine gun, bam, give it up. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. Don't keep trying crap that doesn't work. Move on to something else. Well, I have bypasses that I always love to use bypasses and there's a whole variety of them. I'm sure you guys have seen all these. We've got jiggler keys, we've got skeleton keys, we've got wafer keys, we've got the combs, um, Peterson bypass device, we've got a Peterson knife. This would be a good one to get past the combination lock. Let me get this out of here. We uh, hooks to get through Adam's right. We've got a knife to bypass the internal mechanism. You've seen that before. I'm not going to do it because it won't work on this lock. We've got turners for all the Ural cylinder knobs that can bypass those very quickly. We got the bypass picks for best padlocks to pull out the cores. We got the Peterson silver bullets. They I don't I've never used them. I don't know why our agency bought them. And then there's something that I think people don't often take advantage of enough, and that's shims. Let me move this out of here. I'm going to show you something on shims. I think the reason people don't use the shims. Uh, is because they used the wrong one. I had one laid out, I must have thrown it into the pile. Most people frown on shimming because they say it doesn't work, and that's because they try to make their own shims out of soda cans, or they buy these cheap Chinese ones, which basically they cut your fingers, they bend, they're pieces of crap metal, and they're pretty thick, so you can't get them into too many of the gaps. If you're going to buy junk, that's the kind of results you can expect. But if you buy quality shims, and again, anybody can buy these, um, they're made out of tempered steel, and they're much thinner than the Chinese ones, and they're much thinner than soda cans. So they slide into gaps, which with your eye, you may not believe you'd be able to get in there. But surprisingly, when you put a drop of oil on the shims, you can get into places that you wouldn't imagine. So many locks can be shims. So try it. Use the right shims, though. And you'd be surprised how many padlocks you can bypass. You never have to use those other steps. Okay, shimming doesn't work. What else can we try? Well, we have mechanical devices. We can pop our snapper in here. Put a tension wrench. I'm not going to do it because I, I'm not very good at it. And quite honestly, I haven't had too much luck. But it's an option. If nothing else works, this is always an option. Okay, that doesn't work. What do we do next? Well, bring in the automatic device. Again, I'm not going to do it, but give that. And I'm going to give it... I might give it 30 seconds. If it doesn't work in 30 seconds with a tool like this, it's not gonna. Get rid of it. Give it, give it up. I might decide to impression this tool. If I have time, I'll put my impression tool and I'll impression the key. Time is something we usually don't have. We need to get in fast. I might foil impression it with one of our Y1 templates. Again, it's, it's ready. If I prepare the, the foil impression tool beforehand, yes, you can do it and you can be in probably within about a minute and a half or two minutes. If you fail to put it together, forget it. It's not an option. We can plastic mold the key. Again, all this stuff takes time. It all takes time. Well, you may have rules of engagement that limit you to the things I've just described, non-destructive techniques. But some of us, some agencies, don't have those 
those restrictions. And let's take a look at what some of those might be. Well, we got our master keys, three different sizes. We got saws, we got die grinders. We, we can drill our way, we can beat our aim with hammers, we can pry. If it's a copper or brass shackle, we can pry it off very quickly. We can break chains, we can, etc., etc. There's a wide variety of tools, destructive tools that are available that, well, we just have time to demonstrate or talk about. We're already at 10 minutes. Anyway, uh, the thing is, you need to have a plan of attack. Have a sequence of things in a logical, methodical manner to get through these locks when you see them. Don't get locked into using, like the agent yesterday, one idea. Because if it doesn't work, you're crazy to continue it. Find something different. Try something different. One of them will get you through every single one of the locking devices. Anyway, thank you for your time. Everybody be safe. And uh, now I think you understand why I say stay legal. Uh, I don't want to have to arrest you. <laughs> anyway, th thanks for your time. Bye.